Today we will be demonstrating how to properly pipette and record your data for the volume of a substance, which in this case is water. Before you begin this experiment, you should always make sure that your pipette is properly cleaned. Now the first thing that you're going to want to do is draw water into the pipette from the main beaker and get a measurement from the bottom of the meniscus. A meniscus forms because polar molecules in the glass and water are attracted to each other. Therefore, the water tends to cling to the sides of the pipette. You should always read the measurement of the volume from the bottom of the meniscus. As soon as he gets his first measurement, he will then record that measurement in the initial volume category of his chart. After recording his first measurement of volume, Stephen will empty an unknown amount of water into the second beaker and then get his second measurement from the pipette. Afterwards, he will record this measurement in the final volume spot of his chart. Lastly, Stephen will subtract his final volume from his initial volume to find the volume of water in the second beaker. He will then record this measurement in the difference or delta spot on his chart. Up next, we have Carly. And as you can see, once again, the first thing she will do is draw an unknown amount of water into her pipette and then measure from the bottom of the meniscus and record her data in the initial volume section of her chart. After recording her first measurement, Carly will then empty an unknown amount of water into the second beaker and get a second measurement. She will then record this measurement in the final volume spot of her chart. Now just like before, Carly will subtract her final volume from her initial volume to get the difference in volume, which is equal to the amount of water in the second or smaller beaker. Up next is myself. Once again, the first thing I do is draw water out of the beaker with the pipette. Once I have an unknown volume of water in the pipette, I will then get the measurement from the bottom of the meniscus and record it in the initial volume spot on my chart. After recording my first measurement, I then empty an unknown volume of water into the second beaker. Next, I get my second measurement of volume from the pipette and write this measurement in the final volume spot on my chart. Afterwards, I subtract my final volume from my initial volume to get the volume of the water in the second beaker. I then record this in the third spot on my chart. You should try to name the steps that Sarah is going to perform. You should have named the steps as follows. Step 1. Draw water from the beaker with the pipette. Step 2. Get your measurement of the volume from the bottom of the meniscus and record it in the initial volume spot. Step 3. Empty an unknown volume of water into the second beaker. Get your second measurement of volume from the pipette and put it in the final volume spot on your chart. Fourth and final step, subtract your final volume from your initial volume to get the difference in volume and the volume of water in the second beaker.